This is my favorite stuff. Illustrations by Pete. So, in past videos, I've talked about some things that I like, that I enjoy. Some art supplies, uh, mostly sketchbooks and things like that, or like I did the tier thing with if you only want to spend under $100, these are the different things you could get for the... We're not doing that. We're not talking about money today. I'm just going to talk to you about my favorite stuff. So I've talked about sketchbooks. I'm not going to talk about them much. You have the Etcher sketchbooks, the hot press and the cold press. I love those. You have the Canson XL. I love to do that for swatching, whatever. I've done all that. There's another video for that. This one's just going to be a little different. First, let's talk about some paper because I think what you put the stuff on is the most important thing. If it doesn't act right, for years, I used to use Bristol paper, smooth Bristol paper for watercolor. It was, it was terrible. You don't do that. It's not good. Don't ever do that. Oh, but some illustrators do that. They don't know what they're doing either. Just, just use the right stuff for the job. Three of my favorite papers are made by the same people. So you have the Stonehenge cold press, the hot press, and the 300 pound cold press, and the black paper. That's four. I can't count sometimes. And this is why I'm so excited for Legion to finally come out with their sketchbooks. I'm waiting for that. Please come out with them. Whatever paper you're going to put in there, I'm sure it's going to be great. I want some of that. But use the cotton paper. Don't do like everybody else and have great cotton paper and then you go to put it in a sketchbook and use pulp paper. Don't do that. Use your cotton paper. It's amazing. And one of my all-time favorites is the Arches rough press paper. I love it. I love the texture that goes on that paper. It's amazing. It's a beautiful, wonderful texture. You can see it on. The, it's great and I love it and I use it all the time. Next up, water brushes. I use them like crazy. This is what I use for all these videos. Very rarely do I go into any video with a real watercolor brush. Oh, I do that. I paint watercolor with watercolor brushes. I do that. You don't see that very often, but really you've got to set up the cups of the water. It always gets on the table a little bit, and I don't want to ruin this desk, so I don't do that. I, you, when I do the record the video on the desk, this is what I'm using. And I still hear people saying the same thing about these. They, they just don't like them because they can't control the water properly. Listen, it's very simple. Do you see the little reservoir tip right there? You can see it. I'm going to try and get this on camera. You can see it fill up with water. Do you see that? I'm squeezing it. It's filling up with water. See that dark spot right there? It's starting to drip out. Okay, that's how you know it's a wet brush, a really wet brush. If you want to use a little bit less water, if too much is coming out, just dab it off on a paper towel and all that water goes out of the thing. You can watch it leave and then you know it's a drier brush. It's not that hard to use. You can learn to use this. Learn to control it. I've been using them for years. Sometimes I prefer them over regular watercolor brushes because I know I don't have to keep dipping in all these bottles and jars of water everywhere. It's a lot easier to clean up. I'm not spilling stuff everywhere. If I want to go on the couch or something, and do, no problem right here. If I want to take it out on the road somewhere and I want to sit in the car and sketch and I don't need jars of water everywhere. Just use these. It's not difficult. Now, when it comes to real watercolor brushes, I use the sword brushes or the dagger brushes, or it depends on who, what brand you're looking at, or the angle brushes. But I like to use them. Why? Because they can, you can use it this way and get a very fine line, just like you were using a round. You can do that. You can use it like a flat and, and go this way, and it's wonderful. Or you can press it and then release it and make these strange curves and make these weird shapes. Or you can just dab it and get a really dry brush and you just dab it and it does great for like the rocks on the sides of mountains. These are easy to use and I like them. You can use just this and you don't need to use a round and a flat and all those other shapes. Just this. And I used to use the black velvet brushes and I'm not trying to get crazy here. I'm not condemning you for doing it, but I thought it was all faux squirrel and then actually a blend of real squirrel fur and then 
the synthetic squirrel fur. So there's some real squirrel fur on there, and I just choose not to use it. It's not just that's just my opinion. I don't want to do that. I think that for if I have if I ever get a hawk and I go hawking, I'll collect my own feral squirrel. That's fine. But otherwise, it's just I don't want to kill the animal just to use its fur in a brush. These work just fine. Matter of fact, my favorite ones are the uh, Princeton Aqua Elites. I love these brushes. They're wonderful. The Da Vinci Cosmotop, those are beautiful brushes. And these are the cheap ones, the Simply Simmons brushes. This has been my favorite brush for a very long time. I use it for everything. It works wonderfully well for a synthetic brush and it's a very cheap. You can go pick up a couple of these for less than $10 and you'll be set for years. No problem. When it comes to acrylic paint, which I actually love to use, I do. Well, I don't do it very often on the channel, but I do like acrylic painting. I really do. It's just again with the messes and you gotta have the water pots everywhere to dip it in. That's why I don't do a whole lot of it on the videos. But anyway, I used to use the Liquitex Basics for everything. And one year, I, a friend of mine asked me, I might, if I have a picture of it, I'll put it up on the screen somewhere. A friend of mine was getting married and my wife volunteered me to do something for them and make a sign for them. And I had no problem doing that. And she did the vinyl lettering, my wife did. And then I did the painting uh, on them. But with the Liquitex Basics, it took forever and forever just layering and layering and layering. If you like to layer a lot of layers, and I mean a lot of layers, then use the Liquitex Basics. There's nothing wrong with them. The pigments in them are the are great pigments. They're light fast pigments. They're just a little bit thinned out, so you layer and layer. And many professionals use the Basics paint. That's fine. I like the professional version of the paint, but only in the acrylic gouache version. It's not gouache. I don't know why they call it that. I hate that they call it that. It's just matte acrylic. That's it. It's regular acrylic paint with a matte finish. That This is not gouache, even though it says gouache on it. Gouache will reactivate with water. That's real gouache. This is not. But I use this, my favorite brand to use, is the Liquitex Professional brand. That's what I like. And I'll give the honorary mention to the Golden Open acrylics because if you want to have a little bit more time to work with them and you want to do a little bit more of like an oily technique with them, you can. You can put it down and blend a lot easier. The, the thing with these is though, they are, they take a while to dry. So you have to make sure you have plenty of time to leave them out and let them dry, just leave it somewhere. And here's the thing with oil paints and acrylic paints, I always have an issue with them go, oh yeah, they're drying, but they take so long, sometimes dust is starting to form on them. So sometimes I like to like go on the inside, I'll show you. Let's say I paint on one of these boards, one of these cradled boards. I like to go on the inside and I have these clamps that hold them upside down. And that's how I like to dry them because that way no dust settles on it while it's drying. It can stay upside down for a long time and just stay there. And then it'll be dry and everything will be fine and wonderful. And then I can seal it after it's dry. When it comes to watercolor, my favorite watercolor are Da Vinci watercolors. I'm lying to you, that's not true. I was looking at a Da Vinci thing and I said that word. Daniel Smith watercolor, that's my favorite. Sometimes I don't know, it depends on who's paying me this week. I wish. So Daniel Smith is, there. no one's paying me, by the way. I get no sponsorships right now, that's not what's happening. I'm joking, you piece of. So I like the Daniel Smith paint because they have so many options. This is my current palette right now. Uh, see if you can, let's see if we can get a good picture of that. That's my current palette right now. Oh, that's upside down. There you go. That's my current palette right now. And that's a lot of colors, but really, I don't use that many colors in a single painting usually. They're just the colors that I like, that I gravitate towards, and they're pretty muted for a palette. There's not really a whole lot of bright, vibrant colors on I mean, they're, they're bright and vibrant, but they're not, they're 
they're muted. You know what I'm saying. So right now this is my main palette. So I, I take the middle piece out and then I put these little magnets on the back. Can you see that? If I cover my face, can you see it? Will it focus? Okay, so you see those little magnets right there? I put those little magnets on the bottom so that they sit inside the pan and I can put a lot more in there. That's just how it is. So, and here's what I do. I put, this is upside down too. So down here, I have a white. I have the uh, M. Graham Titanium White Gouache. And I mix my own gouache colors. I have gouache. I just don't use it that much. I use my watercolor and mix it with white gouache. And that's how I get my colors. And if you want the color to be a little bit darker, you put more of the watercolor in. And if you want it to be lighter, you put more of the gouache in. But And because you add the gouache to it, layering and building up color is very easy. So if it doesn't come out quite dark enough where you have to move it a little bit, you can do that. And just as a tip for you, I always take a little piece of paper towel and I put it over the paints. So it, sometimes you're in a moist environment and you don't want to get mold and mildew on your paint. Just do that and this will soak up whatever water is in your palette. Not if it's soaking wet. You don't let the whole thing soaking wet and then put this in. That won't work. So you don't leave the whole thing wet. So when it's mostly dry and it can be have a little bit of wetness in there, it's fine. But if it's mostly dry, you just put this in there, it absorbs the water, and you end up with no mold. I've never had mold in any of my paints because this is what I do. And then I fold it over, and that's it. It's a tiny little package. Not tiny like this big, tiny like this big. And I can still put this in a pocket. It's not that bad. If I absolutely have to go smaller, I do have a smaller one. I'll just take a few paints that I like, put them in here, and just go out for a walk somewhere. And very easy to hold because they have the little ring on the back. So you just put, now some people hold it like a thumb ring and they, they do that. And then they open it like this. And those are the colors that are in my smaller palette usually. Well, there it goes. It's, it's fine, you can do that. That's not how I hold them. If you take your finger and slide it this way and just rest it on your hand. So you're just doing that and you rest it on your hand. It doesn't move, it'll never go anywhere. It's very easy and then you can hold something behind it. So if you have your sketchbook, you can put it in your fingers behind it, leave your hand free and do that. I'll show you. So there you go. There's the sketchbook. There's the palette. Can you see that? Yep, you can see it. And I just hold it and you can dip in and paint one-handed. It's wonderful. And again, I have the little piece of paper towel that I would put in here just in case. So I've said a hundred times I love the Graphitint line of pencils. And my favorite thing that they ever came out with was the little pan set. It's, it's just a little set. I swatched out the colors and it has the little paint brush there and all the paints are here. I don't like, I wish they made all the colors. There's not that many. There's 24 colors. It's not a lot to make, but they only made 12. I don't know what that is about. I think they can go a little bit more, put in the tw put in all 24 and you can just pick and choose your colors and put them in there. That's what I think because some of these, the light fast rating is not that good. And sometimes I'm sketching, but sometimes I want to do something that I may want to sell someday. And I would like to have the option because I love these paints. If you can see, they're very muted. They're very soft color, but they also, when you turn them, you get a little bit of the graphite sheen from it, but not distracting. I hate normal graphite sheen. You're using it and it's gray and silver and you see all the reflection. It, this doesn't do all the reflection. Just little, as you move, little flecks kind of pop up out of it. It's very nice. That's one of my favorite things that I have. And I'll sometimes just take this out with me and do whatever because it's a very small thing. It's hard to hold and balance on one hand when you're trying to do that, but you can figure it out. You just put the thing down somewhere and you paint that way. Posca paint pens. I love them. I have quite a few of them. Uh, they say sometimes, oh, this is the full set. And then you get it and then you realize you're missing a lot of colors because they've come out with supplemental sets. It's not the full set. But that's okay. Black and white are usually the ones that I hold on to the most. 
I'll use them in a gray book. Sometimes I will just use it on a drawing, do a full acrylic painting with all the colors, and just use these for lines, and this will be for highlights, and this will be for shadows and lines, and you put it all over. Very nice. I enjoy it. I like it a lot. They're wonderful paint pens. They go on anything just about. You don't want to put it usually directly on paper and use it like that. It doesn't work as well. You want to put it on something that is already sealed. Like you want to put this on another painting. Perfect. If you want to gesso something and then use it, that's fine. You want to seal it and use it. That's fine. So, but they're great. I love them. They're, they work amazingly well. I've had them for years now. They have not dried out. Probably since 2000, I want to say 18 maybe, I've had some of these from. And still, they work just fine. Now, I want to get serious here for just one second. All of you artists who decide that you need like four inch long pencil leads sticking up, I will show you my solution to that problem. Now what? I like these lead holders. This is a 4B that you can slide in here. You can make the tip as long as you want. You don't have to sit there with a razor blade filing off the ends of your fingers because you're clumsy. This is fine. It works fine. There's no wood on here for you to worry about. You don't have to panic about it. You can do whatever you want. You can shade at an angle. You can hold the pen out four feet in front of you like this and draw. You can... Listen, I, I just a small side rant. If I have a pad here and it's a big thing, let's say it's a giant pad, and I'm, I understand drawing your whole arm get everything into it and just, yeah, you do it like that or this way and you draw into it and you, I get it. When you're drawing small, you want little marks, short little, that's about as long as the line as I need it to be is like that. So I can draw with my wrist. I'm not gonna do this on this. It's not gonna happen, don't do that. You let me draw how I wanna draw, you draw how you wanna draw. but. You want to draw something small, you don't need the big line. Just draw with your wrist like a normal person would draw. That's fine. Some of the greatest artists in the world, watch them draw. They draw like this. It's okay. You can do that. I love when I come across the videos and the people are like, this is the most amazing lesson. It changed everything about my artwork. You got to draw like this. I don't understand that. You look like a bushwhacker, if you understand that reference, and it's not very good. It's, you just, you don't need to do that. You're going to throw your shoulder out. It's not good. But I do like these. I do take these sketching. It's very nice because you don't need a sharpener with you. You just draw. Something breaks. The tip breaks or wears down. You just pop a little bit more out. No problem. It's fine. So I do like these. And I have a couple different ones. I have this one I usually put like a 2H in here so I can do very light lines if I want to. And then I usually use a 4B and then a HB in just a regular pencil, just a regular mechanical pencil. And I can draw with that too. They're wonderful things. I do like them a lot. I like them better than using sketching pencils. The only advantage of the sketching pencil is sometimes it feels a little different in your hand. So if you're a tactile person and you need that, the feeling of the wooden pencil in your hand or the drawing pencil, I understand that, I get it. Otherwise, these are great. I like me some fountain pens. I love fountain pens. I love drawing with them. I love the amount of ink you can put in them. I love how the ink flows out of them. I like the colors of the ink. I like the texture of the ink. I like how it, it's just everything about these I love. And the favorite of these are the demonstrator pens because there's just so much ink. There's like a gallon of ink in there. I don't think I'll ever use that much ink in a couple of years, but I've never actually used up a full one of these, something like this or something like this. I've usually wanted to change the color out before I was done with it. So I'd have to take everything out, of course, and I don't waste it. I put it back. It's a sterile environment in here if I've ever seen one. So I put it back in the ink container. That's fine. But the inks are amazing. I love inks. I have a collection of inks that I use for these. 
all different colors, all different things. Some have a shimmer in them, which I don't use. I don't understand that little mica powder. I, for me, if, if pigment is going to get stuck in here, then I'm sure the mica flakes will eventually get stuck in here. They say they don't. I don't believe them. But I do like the inks that separate from each other. So I have a couple where you put down, it's like dark green, but then where it gets concentrated, it reflects red. So it looks like green and then it goes red. It's very interesting inks, the way that they do that. And I really enjoy that about them. I like brush pens. I have a lot of these. Um, the, from the Pentel pocket brush with the just the actual bristles on the brush all the way to the Tombow Fudenosuke pens if that's the word it's I don't know if that's a word but that's what it says on here so it must be some kind of word but the the felt tip pens and the the Tombow ones they come with a hard and a soft so you can have one that's really lays down a, a, a uniform line unless you really push on it. But it's a little bit thicker. You can get thin lines with it and, and thicker lines with it. And then they have the soft brush, which you can get very thick lines with that. And I love fine liners. I have, I'm not gonna even pull those out. That, this thing here, this thing here is, the whole top section is fine liners. I love those. The Jelly Roll is something that I have used my entire art career, I guess. Ever since I ever found one, I've used it for highlights and doing things. I really like these after you do on toned gray and then you use ink and then you put the black ink and then you use this for highlights and put it over the top. That's everything for me. I love that. That's in my logo and everything. I love doing this. It's just the, the black, white, and gray. I love the way that looks. The Derwent Drawing Pencils. They are my favorite colored pencils ever. They're just so, they're waxy, but they're so smooth and creamy when you put them on the page. It just melts like butter. And you can go over the area many times. Works great with the odorless mineral spirits, which I use. They're amazing. And the white is the most opaque thing I've ever seen in my life. You can go over with anything. It's almost, almost as good as the white from the ink tents. If you have an ink tense white, you put it all over anything and it just, it doesn't look like anything. And then all of a sudden when it dries, it gets bright white and you can just do highlights and lighten colors. If you just put a little bit and the greatest thing ever, I, I really enjoy that. I thought I was going to start this video and show you just very specific things that I liked. I really love it all. I just like art stuff. So sometimes I take crappy stuff and I like to use that, but I, I usually not. Usually I don't like the crappy stuff. I like the good stuff. I'm, I'm, I just, I'm not trying to be an art supply snob. I was born that way. I can't help it. But I do enjoy cheap things. I really do. Some of the canvases that I get are dirt cheap. They're like the Master's Touch canvas from Hobby Lobby or something. And it's like 99 cents for 40 of them. That they, they still work. They're good. I use them. Here's one. It's the black canvas. And I use this sometimes to put stuff on that you would put on black things like this. Now, the thing that confuses me about it is it says here 100% cotton duck. I didn't know ducks grew cotton. I didn't know you could pluck cotton from a duck. But that's what it says here. 100% cotton duck. Can you see that? It's, it's right there. 100%. Let's see. I don't want to get the... Oh, you, you can see my whole... This is my studio. You see that? There's, there's, you can see, oh, you can see some of those pop figures and my guitars in the background. I don't know if you can, you can see the camera for sure. Maybe you can see the, I don't know if you can see, there's my computer screen. There's notes up there for a different video, but I decided to do this one. Let's see if you can see the microphone. There you go. You see the microphone there. There's a closet. That's my wife's office. I built her an office inside the closet. She always wanted one so that she could give me this space because that's the kind of person she is so anyway 
uh, getting back to our our duck canvas. I don't know. I, I can someone explain this to me? I'm gonna have to Google it. I have no idea what what this is. I don't know why. It's, I just realized it says cotton duck. This is not genuine cotton duck. I promise you, there's no ducks that are made of cotton. Maybe what they did was they cut open a stuffed animal and stretched it over some stretch bars and made a canvas out of a stuffed animal. Maybe that's what this is. It's 100% cotton duck stuffed animal. I don't mean to obsess over it, but I think that just ruined my life. Am I painting on a duck? So thumbs up the video if you like everything, like me. And it doesn't really matter, there's just, if it's an art supply, you'll get it. it especially if you can paint on a duck. Alright, that's about it for me. I'm gonna go. I'll see you in the next one.